Hey, Bakri. Hey. 2016 was a very busy year for Proton. Oh, crazy year. Four launches in one year. But I think out of the four, uh, the most important one is this one. Yeah, you're right. The bread and butter, the Persona. It takes over from where the original model left off. That model itself was already a very strong seller for Proton. You're right. So this one improves on that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. To find out, let's go for a drive. Alright, so here we are, Bakri, in the all-new Proton Persona 2nd generation. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not so, my first time. I've okay. given it for a short while. So what do you what are your impressions of this car? Let's start from the outside. Okay, yes. Looks wise, uh -huh. I wouldn't say it's the best looking or good looking. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's bad looking. Yeah. Because you see, what Proton has done is they made sure there's space inside. Correct. By doing that usually ruins how the car looks. Yeah, it's a compromise lah. Yeah. It's a compromise. But they managed to hide some of that ugliness. Yes. Like 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 that black part underneath the rear bumper. The the, the diffuser. Yes, yes. If, if not it'll be like one blank big thing, mm -hmm. right? Correct. It will add a uh, substantial visual mass yes. to the yeah. rear. Uh, by not just making it a different color, they make it uh, uh, some texture. On yeah, it. it's like they sculpted it lah. Yes. Yes. So Good job there. Mm -hmm. It's not ugly. I, I when I pack it, it will look like wow, that's a dugo. Yep. Right. But it looks okay. For me, uh, this car's silhouette, the profile, right? Mm. It's not a natural sedan profile, but yeah. mainly it's because they they Proton adapted it from the Iris platform. As Iris, usual. Yeah. So like for example, like we have seen in the previous generation, uh, Mazda two. Yeah. Then also the Ford Fiesta, and in some ways the the first Honda, the earlier generation Honda City in yes, 2004. Yes, yes. When you take a hatchback, what was originally developed as a hatchback yeah. and you make a sedan out of it, yes. there are inevitably some compromises to the, to the yes. car shape. It's, it's mm. as if they took an ugly stick and hit it. Yes, yeah. yes. But that being said, the profile is not natural, but the details that brought on in that put all the little details uh -huh. uh, I think it's very commendable like uh -huh. if you look close like what you mentioned earlier the diffuser uh, element yes. at, the, at the lower part of the yes. bumper that's one uh, you also notice that the front nose of the car now wears a common theme with the other Proton models that were launched in 2016, mm -hmm. the Saga, Padana, yes. uh, and even to some extension, the Preve. Mm -hmm. And if you look even closer to the lights, you will see those nice Proton. Yes. Details. So, the they they really put a lot of effort in the details just to you know to give the car a bit of uplift in the perceived quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Right. And you, you can see they put that that thought into the interior too with yes. some modern lines and a fixed stitching i'm not a fan of that fixed stitching to be honest with you i am, i i remember berating toyota when they introduced that in the vios i'm still not impressed by it but i have to uh, concede the fact that visually at least uh -huh. it does give the cabin a bit more uh upmarket uh, appearance and mm -hmm. when you combine it together with the the, the mild chrome touches on the air con vents mm -hmm. and also the uh, sorry the air con control knob and also the you know this uh, center console center console it does give a more uh, appearance like this it looks on the on the on the pictures it looks like a very um, not very a more upmarket car until you touch it until you touch <laughs> it okay yeah. when you touch it it's not it's not uh, soft plastic but yeah. Yeah, at least you know now that I'm driving. This car has ten thousand kilometers yeah. on the clock. There's no, I don't hear any significant rattling of the dashboard. Uh, what lah? Well, I'm the type of person who's okay not having soft touch on the dash. Yeah, because to me the only reason you would touch it is I don't know why somebody would touch the dash. When you're driving, you're driving. When you're sitting here, you're born in a jam. Yeah, right? maybe you touch it here, you put your hand here. So. Soft touch here, but on the dash, I'm okay. It's yeah, soft, the soft dash, touch. soft touch plastics on the dash, right? It's just an expression of luxury. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when you're when you're one of the Atas brands, right? Ah, uh, uh, that is when you you put a soft touch plastic there to tell, right? I'm one of the big boys. I can afford this. <laughs> so I'm okay with the, the yes, soft touch there. Yes. Like you said, the color combination. I like how they did uh, uh, combine a lighter color on the bottom side yep. of the car. Yep. So um, it doesn't look as gloomy. It gives the cabin a more airy feel. Yes. yes. Yeah. Smart on them. Um, but I do worry about the bottom part here where my shoe might hit and scuff it up. Ah, yeah. Well, that's that's the that's the the problem with lighter colored interiors. It, it's easy.
easier to to dirty on. Yeah, but mm. but on the door, I don't know why they put it here because now it looks like. Hmm. But that being said, uh, more on to more practical concerns. Yes. Uh, one of the things that that uh, caught my attention with this cabin was mm. that despite the dashboard being practically identical to the Iris, right? Yes. The uh, quality seems bad, slightly improved. Ah. The aircon control knobs, for example, right? It feels more solid. Okay. okay. Uh, like the Iris when I re reviewed last year, read uh -huh. the review on Carly's Okay. Uh, the the aircon knobs are uh, and the buttons, right? Mm -hmm. Feel a bit looser. You know, the tactile feel yeah, of the that, buttons that is not uh, movement are not as convincing. Yes, a bit yes. that free play, right? Yeah. Is yeah. So that one is significantly reduced in the persona. So they 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 in another uh, kudos to Proton for that. But uh, talk about practicality. Mm -hmm. The the though there's a lot of space for you to put a few things here yeah. and there, but it's, it's all so shallow. Yes. So there is a lot of quantity in center console storage space, yeah. but not a lot of depth. So uh, you know, if I put my latte here, right, it yeah. will spill. Yeah. yeah. I can't even put my handphone properly here. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you see, the thing is that this, I think Proton, they have done. They they have the right thought in the way they compartmentalize this center console, but. Mm. I would add a bit more depth. Ah uh, yes, yes. And and talking about space, mm -hmm. quite spacious. Yes, yes, yes. Even the rear seat, I said just now. Yeah. Um, the angle is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is, I noticed getting in and out. Yep. Uh, the the center pillar is a bit too close. Yes. So yes. instead of side stepping, I gotta push my yes back. It's a bit un the entry and exit is not. It's not entirely natural. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see that they, they also notice that, that, yeah. that slight problem. Yeah. So they cut a notch at the bottom yeah. of the plastic door panel. Uh, last year when we reviewed the Persona, one of the feedbacks that, one of the comments that we got from our readers was that uh, the old Persona had adjustable headrests. For the ah, year. Uh, this one does not. So last yeah. year I actually asked the Proton engineers about it. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that uh, in their crash tests, they found that these fixed headrests are sufficient to provide adequate anti whiplash protection in the event of a rear collision. I see. So it, it meets the necessary safety requirement. But you know, when I say at the back, right, it doesn't give me that same comforting head support that I'm that I'm accustomed to. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. But the Iris has uh Ah yes, the Iris strangely enough has adjustable headrests. Mm. Ah, but one thing they also they improved at for the rear accommodations of the Persona, and ah. I know this for a fact because I always take the airport limos that were that was from the old Persona. Okay. The the tie support is improved because they made the seat cushion longer. Ah. The okay. old Persona they gave the impression of uh, leg of leg room <laughs> by shortening the seat, you know. Uh, uh. But when you sit there for an extended period of time, you don't get any tie support. I see. Mm. I see. And also the boot space. Boot space, oh, it's fantastic! It's a lot bigger than five hundred and eight liters or five hundred and ten liters. Yeah, there. but then again, mm -hmm. I noticed that the the opening, is, like the door, is yeah. kind of small. Yes, so you have the capacity to carry big items, <laughs> but how you masukkan the big items <laughs> into the boot, right? Uh, ah, that is that may be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> oh, but that being said, uh, uh, you still get sixty forty split folding. Rear seats. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, if you can, if you can, at least if you have long items to carry, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it will. The persona will swallow it lah. Uh, it's okay. just you know, putting the items in that will be the challenge. If, if you like puzzles, then you oh yeah play with it. But how how's the driving impression? Uh driving impression is good. Last year we went for the media drive. We drove this car all the way to Kuantan and back. Okay. Uh, high speed stability. This car is fantastic. Right. Probably. Among the best in class, I don't dare to say best in class. Among the best in class. Okay. Yeah, um, well, it's it's proton. Handling yeah. is handling is is is, uh, is there. No big news. No big news. Uh. The um the powertrain refinement uh. substantially improved over the previous generation Campro engines. Uh -huh. You notice okay. that as we were traveling, the level of road noise is a lot lower. I see. I see. I I also noticed immediately that the the engine noise mm -hmm. is lower too. Yes. Uh and. Brought on to their credit, they also refined the calibration of the CVT. Mm. So this CVT, uh, compared to their early efforts with the Saga FLX, mm -hmm. the Preve, mm -hmm. uh, the Iris, even this CVT feels more decisive. I see. I yeah, see. it's more responsive. Mm. 
but there's still that slight lag between I think it's un unavoidable uh, partly because it's a clutch based CVT ah uh, the yeah. clutch engagement lah mm. oh, that makes sense but yeah. that means also the fuel consumption is okay oh it's very good uh, despite this car not being certified as an EEV uh, mm. uh, because my wife owns one of these uh -huh. uh, over over the last like 2-3 months of, of ownership right mm. our car averaged 8.3 liters per 100 kilometer oh in the mix, I mean, in the mix of all drying conditions, you know. I see, I see, quite good. Quite okay, good, quite good. to put that into context, my own uh, Proton Waja uh -huh. 1.6 manual, which runs a previous uh, uh, generation Capro engine, the first generation, ten, ten, wow, with manual transmission, and that car only drinks 97. <laughs> Why? I I don't know, but when I pump 95, I feel a drastic reduction in performance uh, a drastic reduction in an increase in fuel it, consumption it, it, and also knocking it, it might be carbon build up can you recommend me a good format bro that one we'll see like we'll, we'll see, see later, later. Okay. yeah so there already is some significant improvement uh from the previous persona and even from previous portal models to this one uh, so so mm -hmm. let, let's see if i'm buying it eh? mm -hmm. uh, which which variant should i go for is it the middle variant is good enough or no would you like should i go just all the way if you can afford it go for go for the top spec model which la. is what we're driving go now go for the top spec model uh i mean you get six airbags yep. uh you get uh re I, I don't really care about the infotainment system but it comes with a reverse camera so that's what i would want in my car you get the convenience of uh of keyless entry oh uh, yeah it's yeah. a must it's a yeah. must because yeah. you know why yeah not even the axia has exactly <laughs> i only wish that uh they had they offered this spec with a manual transmission but uh, such the, the demand for such a variant is practically non-existent so. will your wife drive a manual though oh uh, no she won't ah there you go <laughs> you won't get it anyway yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So I get the top of the line. Yeah. Um, but is the mid range? Well, actually, uh, even if you are constrained by budget, okay. if you go for the the, the base model, mm. you still get dual airbags. Mm. You still get ABS. You still get electronic stability control. Wow. Okay. So at the very least, you take creature comforts out of the picture, mm. right? Whatever spec of the persona you choose. Mm -hmm. You get a ASEAN NCAP 5 star rated car, no exceptions. Yes, yes. Your yes. safety, uh, to Proton's credit, is uncompromised regardless of your choice of car. Uh, okay, okay, I get what you mean, I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Now to choose the color. La. Choose the color. Uh, color. Uh, Proton's communication color of this car is that brown shade, carnelian brown. Uh, my wife and I, pre we frankly prefer the, the red, which this test car is also similarly finished in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but Proton on color side, they so they have always been slightly adventurous. Ah, uh -huh, yes. I like that. I like yes, that. Yes. Uh, okay, let's okay. talk about what should we do, what we think about the car outside. Okay, Con. After we drove it for a while, what do you think about the car? Well, I'm still not entirely enthusiastic about the shape of this car. I think uh -huh. it's not a natural looking three box sedan. But that being said, the de some of the details of this that we see here are very, very nifty. So I have to comment Proton for that. Features wise, I think this car has got it very competitive. You've got keyless entry, you've got six airbags, you've got electronic stability control. So the bases are covered as far as equipment wise is, con uh, is concerned. Uh, I agree with you. It looks a bit awkward, but that's natural. Mm -hmm. From a hatch mm -hmm. to a sedan, all right. Like the Mazda 2, right? Fiesta. Fiesta. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's always a bit of compromise when yep. you start with a good-looking right. hatch. Yep. Uh, and also, yes, you're right. The features are there. It's on par with its own competitor in the B segment. Uh, the keyless entry, the touch screen, everything's there. But I. I think right for someone driving the old persona, mm. the Prevy is a more feels like a more logical upgrade than this car. You're right, size-wise, yeah. but in every other aspect, mm. I think uh, if you move from a, the previous persona to this one, uh, the only thing you you miss out is space. Right. But features, the technology, the driving, this would be a, a more natural uh, a move. Even if you look at spiritually, whereas the previous persona 
came from a hatch, the Gen yes, 2. Yes, yes, it carries right? on from where the previous persona persona started. It's, yes. It, it was derived from a hatchback. Yes. Right? And now it's a much improved car from the hatchback, yeah. right? And it is also here as Proton's best hope moving forward, just yes. as the original persona was. The same thing. Yeah. So with all of that, I think this car will do well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you the chassis is so new. Mm -hmm. If you drive the Preve, then you drive this. I'm like, hmm, I'll go for this one. Okay, fair enough. So that concludes it for this review. Right. So, what do we have next after this? Huh? Next after this, after so many requests, some people will be asking, should I go for this or the Saga? Yeah. Let's look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching.